Dave here. How are you? Today is the last live show that I'll be doing. Maybe forever. Maybe I'll have a break for a year. We'll see what happens. Just letting everyone know I'm fine. There's just been too much happening in my life. This is where we got up to. I have painted this. This is the front. It's looking really, really nice. Today on the show, we will have a look at the mounts that I'm making. I've already made one. It's finished. And we'll make the other one, and I'll show you how I'm going to join it together, how I'm going to create a counter bore with the drill press over there, and uh, my little tricks for creating the finesse to the end of it. Anyway, we're going to get the show started. It may run over time a little bit today. I want to get this thing finished, and I hope you enjoy it. Stay for 10 minutes, stay for an hour, or however long it runs. But again, this is the last show. See you later. Dave here, how are you? Dave here, how are you? Today is the 18th of February, 2024, my final show. Now this might be it, as far as the live shows are concerned, or I may come back on a little bit later on. Now you may be interested as to why I've decided to pull the plug on the show. There's a couple of reasons. One reason is I've just got so much on my plate at the moment, I've been shuffling things all over the place and actually getting nothing done. There's too much. Uh, to give you an indication, I had a company send me a machine and it sounded like it was going to be great to review and I could keep the machine after it and it's substantial price. The machine wasn't up to it and I've said to you before, if I review something and I think it's good, I will do a video on it and share it with you guys. If I don't think it's any good, I will pack it up and send it back to the manufacturer. And that's what I've done. This is a $4,000 machine, as I said. Would have been great if it worked, but it didn't to what the standard that I would approve. It's gone. Now, the other reason, the other reason, I was uh, having a chat to a friend the other day. And I mentioned that I was going to basically retire from doing the live show. I was not retiring from YouTube. I'm still going to do how-to videos when I can focus on it and give you a quality product. But he said to me, Dave, I want to show you something. And he said, I show this to a lot of people. Now, he was working in inches. I will work in metric. So I'm going to go to the overhead camera here and put my old person glasses on. And uh, where are we? This one. This is a tape measure. Yep, great, you're all saying. Now, I am going to say for every centimeter along this tape, that would represent one year of my life. I expect to get to 90. I think that's not a bad estimate. My mum's 95. Uh, my dad didn't make it that far. So the early days, remember, I said, my mother said to me, what are you going to make in this workshop? And I said, I'm going to make David happy. Well, you know, that hasn't been happening lately. So <laughs> here we are. This is where we are at. I'm around here. I'm mid-60s. And so you can see all the way down here, this has been my life so far. And this is what I expect to get to. I was expecting to get to here, but... Yeah, seeing mum's kicking on, I think I might get out towards there. Now, that's quite a lot less than all here. And it's starting to let me think, well, I really do need to do some things for myself. Now, the other thing, I looked at this and I saw, all right, well, 60 to 70 there is a 10-year span. Now, in that 10 years, I've got 100 millimeters. So for every year, there's 10 millimeters, basically. So a centimeter is made up by 10 millimeters. I'll bring it up a little bit closer. 
So for every millimeter is representing 36.5 36 days. Now have a think about that for a second. I'll come back to the other camera. Double click, of course. 36 and a half days per millimeter. Now I can comprehend a month. I can comprehend 36 and a half days in front of me. A month obviously is 30, 31, whatever. But 36 is close enough. And I can look at that and I say, all right, uh, I can plan that month out. I know that at the beginning of the month, we're going to do a couple of markets and I'm going to mow the lawn possibly four times during summer, during that time. And I'm going to be mucking around with the dogs. They have a worming pill once a month. I can organize a month easy. A year, I can work that. I can say, all right, well, birthdays. I know all the kids' birthdays and everyone else that um, are, are close. I know their birthdays and that's over a year. That's fine. I can, I can comprehend a year. I cannot comprehend 20 years. So this is where I was starting to look at it. I thought, right, well, break it down into a bite size. Remember when I did the Luteans bench first, the first bench that I did, not the bed head, and I drew a grid to be able to follow the lines and everything to expand up a photograph that I'd seen. So I was looking at a grid and I could work those little bits of a grid rather than just trying to draw freehand and get it right. Well, it didn't get it right. I got it right by doing the grid. That's what I'm doing. And when I saw this, I didn't think it would affect me that much. And then it's only since uh, I've been thinking about things, I thought, you know what? I don't have that much time left. Life is very short. <laughs> Believe it or not, it is extremely short. So that's where I'm at. I'm still going to do YouTube. I'm going to be able to slow down, help Vicky, have more family life or have family life. <laughs> because I haven't had much, um, and get some proper videos out for you guys. And as far as my patrons are concerned, you have been supporting me so well, and I thank you very much for that. And going forward, I'm not going to leave you out of it. We will still have, if you want to, we will still do a Zoom meeting, but it won't be every week. I might do once a month, because I realize there's some people out there that basically some of my patrons have seen this as an online men's shed. They are not able to get off to a men's shed or go to a social function, whatever, because of, because of their physical state. So I will maintain that. I'll keep doing that going forward. If you, want to, if you need to join in, that's great. Oh, look, if you want to give me a thumbs up as well, that'd be fantastic. Uh, as a bit of a cheerio. Uh, anyway, so happy for you, Dave. Sending love and support from Texas. Well, thank you very much. Now, back to the back to the show. This is one of the mounts that I've made. And this is what we're going to make on the show from these two bits of wood here. Now, I've come up with a little way for this to fasten onto the wall. And this will be going onto the bed head. Do you want to have a look at the bed? I'll bring it over and you can have a look. I've got... I've just finished painting it last night. I'll grab it and bring it over. This has been a, a lovely project to work on. I'll see if I can get it over here without scaring the dogs. It's a good size. This is for a king size bed. And that's, that's it. It's painted white and I've used a roller to give that kind of a little dimply finish. It's a, it was a, a hairy roller. <laughs> I love this. It's come up so well. I spent a lot of time working on all of these parts inside here. And see, just here, here, I should say, that's got the round over. Remember I said I was going to get a quarter inch bearing 3 8 round over. I did. I got one from Amana Tool. They sent one out to me because I asked for it. They said, not a problem. Because I haven't seen anything like that in Australia. I'll pop this back. So that's a project that I've been really happy with. So here it is. I'll show you a quarter inch with a half inch bearing to start. 
That's a quarter inch round over with a half inch bearing. In comparison, that is a quarter inch bearing with a three eighth, which is close enough to 10 millimeters, 9.7 or something like that. Um, this was brilliant. I can get right into the corners. Remember I'd cut that all out with a quarter inch or 6.35 millimeter compression cutter on the CNC. This bearing allowed me to get right into all of the corners and it's just magic. Okay, now to do this guy here, open it up, there we go. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna show you the process that I did to make this. It's really, really easy, but it's one of those things that you look at it and look at it and you have to actually come up with the idea. When you see someone has done something and you look at it, you go, oh yeah, well that was basic. You don't appreciate all of the nutting out that the person's done. So I have, remember I, this is recycled cypress pine that I got from just over there. It's still a big pile. <laughs> I'm gonna to have to clean all of this up. I'm gonna have a quick read here. Well said, David, a great life choice. Another lesson for all of us. Barry, well, there you go. Um, people will be dropping in and dropping out watching the show. I totally get that, that's not a problem. So we're gonna get into the woodwork now. I'll go up to Carl Cam and you can watch how I'm gonna do this. Uh, when I find it again. Oh, and the other thing, we, you know, the competition I had for this um, hair dye. <laughs> not many people entered it. So I'm guessing you're all happy with gray hair. So there we go. I have a right angle here and I have a right angle on that one. And I'm going to bring that across and I can adjust. I have to make sure that when my square goes across here, it's going to reach all the way to the tip there. So that's how I'm going to work out where I'm going to with the length there. All right, so that's that. Now I could do it like that. And that'll probably be fine because I'm going to create a V in here anyway. There's some chipping there, but I'm not worried. So now I will get, uh, what length are these going to be? I like to see it here by that one. And I can put a little mark there. And looking at it over the back here, I'll put a domino there, a domino there, and a domino there. So I'll put a little mark across, and a mark across there, and a mark across there. And it's going to be cut off there, like that. And this end will be cut off around there somewhere. So I have one, two, three dominoes I'm going to put in. <clears throat> so we'll cut those now with the domino. Go over to another video. Hold on. I'm going to come back to this one and do another quick read while I can. Um, <clears throat> Carl, Dave, I've been watching your show since Barry was a pup and you had dark hair. Here, I understand why you're stepping back and support your decision. I'm not sure how I'll spend my Saturday evenings now. I'm sure you'll find a way, Carl. Um, Sean, YouTube is good, but family comes first. I will keep watching in your videos. This is a brilliant woodworking day. Thank you. So, well, hi, guys. So sorry to hear this is your last show. At the, all the best for your future. Just had a huge shift from the New England area to East Coast. Good luck, everyone. Um, excellent. Hi, Cole. How are you as well? Morning, Dave. And thank you for wonderful shows from John O'Connell. Um, excellent. Excellent. I don't know how many likes are happening over here because I've, I've got no idea. I don't see the update. I just see the, the text coming down the side here. Uh, Richmond Woodworks just joined. When you say last show, you mean last live. Will there be content in general? Correct, Richmond Woodwork. I, this is the last live show after 10 years. It's a long time. And I reiterate, I will be going back to doing specific videos, much like when I built hand planes and things like that. You know, So you can watch along, it might take 20 minutes, and you can see me go through all the processes. I'm gonna take this over here and plug in camera three. 
There it is. So you can see I have the domino ready. I don't have the um, power turned on yet for the dust extractor, so I'll do that. Now, if you have, let me tip this up a little and come back. If you have a, um, a Google Nest or speaker or anything like that, you might want to put your hand over it for the moment because it's not going to know what the hell I'm talking about. But mine will. Hey, Google, turn the battery charger on. There you go. Don't you love her? <laughs> All right. Uh, where are we? I'm going to put dominoes there and there's. But first, I'll put some marks on here to identify so I don't get lost. Um, that'll do. And this is join. We'll put join here. And on that one. Cool. All right. You may or may not be able to see all that. But you can see where I've got the lines. I've put some other pencil lines there. And I've written in there joint. Now, next thing to do is use the domino. So I shall put dog there. And I should be able to get the domino, domino, domino there. That's fine. Put that one over there. Put one of these guys in up here. Why isn't that grabbing? There we go, that's got it. Now, this will make a little bit of noise. I'll spin that around that way so you can see what's happening. But it's not too bad. One of the things I have to do though, is I need to put a square line across so I can see it easier on the, through the uh, viewfinder on the domino. It's important that I'm going square off the area I'm putting the domino into. If I don't go square off here, I, some people might say, well, Dave, why didn't you put it? Why didn't you go square from over there? Because the domino doesn't work that way. So it must be square off the part where I'm going to do the plunge to create the mortise. When I put that on there like so, you might see that they're, they're square off that line. So they're both going to work properly. Okay, now that I've got that out of the way, I'm on the tight setting on the uh, 700 domino. And we'll go in here. I'm doing a 30 millimeter deep plunge. So this is why I love this machine. Look at that. That's just beautiful. Now, I will do the buddies on this side. Move that down to there. That's got it. And if you want one of my benches, links in the video description down the bottom. One, two, three. This one is not the one that I want. These ones. And again, I'm going tight. I'm not going to do a loose fit here. It's going to be tight. I'm going to bring this camera around this side so you can see how it happens. I love it. All right, come back to this camera over here. Now I just caught something down the side here. I'm gonna read down here. Sunny day, hi Dave. This is Rick Jackson, the guy that sent you the Stanley Tools book. 
Give me a second. Give me a second. You know what? I treasure that book. I really do. This is the book. See this? This is a beautiful book. Look at that. Now, why do I love this book? When I inherited the toolbox that's got all of Arthur's tools in it, um, I was doing a series of videos. What's in Arthur's toolbox? I think there was 30 videos in, in the series. And these are things I used to do all the time, but I haven't done it because I'm just too busy. And Rick was watching all those years ago, and this arrived in the mail from the States. This is a very expensive book. And I'll tell you what, Rick, I, um, I love this book. I, and you saw how quickly I got it. I, I keep this very close to me. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Wally, well done. Uh, well, Dave, I personally can see the look in your face that this is a very hard decision to make. With the rest of the fan club, we'll miss the spontaneous moments that you have had. A very best to you. Thank you. Uh, good luck to you, mate, from Sunny. Uh, Gary, message retracted. Okay, Silver Hot, hi guys, so sorry to hear this is your last show. All the best for the future. Just uh, a huge shift, okay. Uh, Noel, morning all, sad that this is ending, but thanks for all day. Thank you very much for the future. Thank you too. All right, here we go. We're gonna get back into this part. We can't get melancholy, we've gotta move on. All right, so there's my two halves. And they're going together like that. Remember, uh, one will be square, and I'm hoping I haven't stuffed this. No, it's all good. <laughs> I look at things and I go, you know what? It's that way around. There. This is going to be the wall bedhead secures to here. So, next thing I want to do is I want to put a domino in there, just one to start. Now, I make my own dominoes most of the time, I use Merbel decking. I've always got a little bit of mobile decking left over from jobs. You know, if I do a bit of a repair, I buy enough and then I rip it down. A mobile is a hardwood. It's not an Australian hardwood, but it does grow in North Queensland, far North Queensland, but mostly in New Guinea and Malaysia. Uh, in New Guinea, they call it quila. So there you go. I will put one of them in there as a locator and I'll put the other guy on. And now I have, actually I'm going to put two in so it doesn't wobble around because I'm going to take it over to the drop saw because I want to cut it. Where are we? Oh, have I, there we go. I don't know if I picked the right one. That one might be too long. I might trim that one down. We'll just go with the one. There we go. So I'm going to trim this, I'll spin this camera around. Yeah, a lot of memories, which, you know, uh, is great. And I hope you've had some good memories of the show as well. Let's go to camera three and see if I've got enough of it showing. You can see that I've got a domino there as well. That's just one of the projects beside me here that we've built on the show. The tool chest. This is a recent project. This is how I cut the domino. I make, I cut it to thickness and then I run, this is a 12 millimeter. So then I put the six and three quarter in, six and three quarter millimeter round over bit in and create the round on both sides. I've shown you on the show how I do it. I've got a mark just there, which is at 60 millimeters. So I can advance that up to it. I can put something on my ears. This is gonna make a little bit of a noise and protect my eyes, of course. And so I'll do one. Hopefully stop. Now, one of the other things one of the other things I love is this thing. This is a $10 million stick. 
I love it, love it, love it. So I can slide that along to there. I can put my hand there and hold that. And it's not going to go anywhere. So this is while I'm getting down to very, very short pieces. Like, I'll show you. Am I tempting fate? I'm going to cut one slightly longer and I'll show you how it really excels. You watch this. This is too long. So I need to cut it down. Let's turn that on, turn the lasers on. I need to cut it down to that length there. Come on, stay still. Got it. Safe is what I like a lot. Oh, I've got to cut the um, cut the piece to length, haven't I? Tip it up a bit. All right, I'm going to cut this end. And I've got the lasers happening there. You can see them shining nicely. And I'm right on the line there, which is great. It's not going to slide. This is why I put the domino in there. So because I, if that slid while I was cutting it, it's like slid down this way, it could jam on the blade and catch and then pull the wood. And, you know, these things I like. I'm, I'm kind of attached to them. <laughs> If I can put it that way. Okay, here we go. A scribing cut to start. And then a back. Come on. And there we go. Now I'm going to take a little bit more off because that's looking a bit ratty. Just a touch. Another scribing cut. And back. It's still a bit ratty, but not as much. Now, I've got to cut the other end. So to do that, I'll move that along. Out of the way. I like these. I like them a lot. These are my um, zero clearance that I use. Now, when I do the first cut, it will just take a little bit off there. Watch this. That's now a perfect zero clearance. You can do this all day and it's going to be perfect. Slide this along. Until I'm at that one. Remember, I took a little bit more off there, so I'm just going to go past a little bit to about there. Nice and square. And again, a scribe cut first. And back. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to put a blade on here called from Messer. Now Messer is an Australian company and they use German machines to make saw blades for these. I have links in the video description down the bottom. Now you can spend a few hundred dollars on a Festool blade for these things or a lot, lot, lot less. And I think I have a discount coupon there as well. But anyway, have a look in the video description. Do yourself a favor and help me out a little bit as well. So there we go, that's our blank done. Next thing to do is to put the other dominoes in and I'm going to glue them to one side only. And well, before that, we've got to drill the holes. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. So let's get back over here. Where are we? I think, yeah, it's 
it's copped it. Okay, hello Dave, thanks for all the shows, Dave, my pleasure. Um, Gary, good luck Dave, unfortunately life is short, comes to when a review is needed to enjoy the end part of our tape measures, <laughs> just celebrated my 63rd on Valentine's Day and have similar thoughts. Life is short. Uh, Michael says, so sorry for the last show, but understanding to you, your time with family is important. 101 people watching, that's going to be getting close to a record. Let's get it up to 200. If you've got two computers or a phone and everything, log in on both of them. Make, <laughs> put a smile on my face. So, wow, look at that. That's a going away present. Um, Carl, I've seen all three CD movies. Okay, all right, take that apart. And as I said, I'm going to uh, hit these with my plane, which is over here, looking around, looking around. And whilst I've still got uh, the marks and everything there, I know, and all, all the domino holes, the mortises are kind of a giveaway as to where I have to plane. So I'll do that now. Around this way so you can see a little bit. Like so. Other way around. Now, because, because the grain is going straight on this, I don't want to plane from here because I'm going to go up at an angle and I will end up tearing it up a little bit. So I'm, one of the great things about this little plane is I can hold it like this. Remember, it's got all these fancy spots in it, all for a purpose. Got to try and do it without actually planing my thumb. <laughs> it's a little easier on the Stanton bench because I could, I've got the non-slip strips and the uh, dog holes. We'll do the other one over there. I could have run it on the router and created the V, but I'll bring that camera down here again. We don't need it up at the drop saw anymore. About there, I think. Let's have a look, see what it looks like. Spin it around a touch. Yep, that'll do me. Hey Pierre, what have you been up to? Having a lay down outside? Okay, so the, the, the non-slip tape really does help me out while I'm doing this kind of stuff. And also having a dog here and there, apart from Pierre. Okay, that's going to just so much easier. I love this bench. All right, here we go. I'm going to just sneak it up a touch. That's enough. How nice is that? And then flip her over, other side. It's a good sound, a sharp blade on, on, uh, on wood. There we go, they're done. I'll do just a little bit more on this one. I should have advanced the blade before I started. Be 
beautiful. Done. Okay, now this one is the one going against the wall because I can tell it's got the square, the 90 degree here. So I need to put three holes in here, all finishing at the same depth from the bottom as a counter bore. The, the hole diameter has to be enough for the screw head to go down there. And I have to leave enough meat in the bottom of the counter bore for the screw to have a purchase on the wood here to pull it up tight. If you go down too far, you're just going to tear it, pull it straight out the back. Now, the problem that I had when I first started doing the other one was when I did the counter bore, drilling the small hole, the bloody drill bit wasn't long enough. So I was in all sorts of drama. And then I thought to myself, idiot, idiot features. You have a stepped drill bit that you use with your Craig jig. Purpose built for this kind of stuff. But I had this mindset that I had to go into the side with the Craig jig. You can do a counter ball with the Craig jig drill bit, step drill bit, and that's what I've got set up in the drill press. So let's go over there. Uh, the sign night needs to be the last show. Uh, let me think about what you're saying there, Zoe. Zoe is in the audience there, and she made this for me many years ago. And it's lovely. It's been iconic. Remember the last episode of Seinfeld? Um, he had a push bike hanging on the wall just as you come out of the lounge room to going off stage, presumably to a bathroom and off to a bedroom. Same kind of thing. It's iconic. I'll get that camera and bring it around here. And I shall show you what I mean with this step drill bit. There it is. So, there's the drill bit. This is a Craig step drill bit. Put that there and you'll be able to see it a little bit easier. It'll come down to a certain depth. I've set it up already, so it, it's not going to go through. I'll move this because that's a pain. Back to about there is fine. Okay, so I will put a hole. Let's see. Should I put one there? I think I will because the angle of this is where the domino is going to go. And I don't really want to have an issue with the drill press hitting the domino when I go through. I did the other one slightly differently to this and I don't want it there. Now I need to come onto this side because otherwise I'll go into the area the domino is in. So I think if I go about there, that should be pretty damn fine. I'm just going to grab a clamp. I do have a specialized clamp that goes onto the drill press table, but I find that uh, whilst it works, it's not going to hold it how I want to at the moment. So I'm going to put one of these one-handed clamps on the back here. So she's not going to go wandering around. There we go. That's nice and safe. I think it's plugged in. I've got the speed turned up. And I've... Also, the domino is going to be leaning over this way. I need to be able to get a screwdriver down there. So I, all these little things you've got to think about. I think that'll be enough clearance. I'll put a domino in there to test it. See, that's the angle. I can get a screwdriver in there easy. I'll bring it back just a touch. There we go. That's fine tuning there, buddy. That's beautiful. Take that out. Turn this on. Ah, uh, battery's not... Not battery. The... Uh, PowerPoint's not working for whatever reason. Let's take it out of there and put it into this one for the moment. 
Now, when we have the Patreon meeting after the show, remind me to plug this, the uh, speakers back in because I've just disconnected them. There we go. See that? That's going to be at the bottom of the hole. Beautiful. The other reason for clamping the wood down is that as you lift the drill back up, it can tend to lift the wood up at the same time and uh, cause a bit of grief. Let's see how that is. Cypress smells beautiful. So there's the hole. I can't see daylight through it yet, so I might need to just raise the drill press up a touch. The table, I should say. To about there. And lock it. Make sure we're going to travel in the same spot, and I'll put the clamp back on. Let's see what we've got. Still no daylight. Why is that? I'm sure we were getting down to the bottom. We'll have a look. I should be. Oh yeah, there it is. It's just there. I can see it. Beautiful. All right. I'm going to drop it down just a touch more. Or raise the table up just a bit more. Cool. Get all this part right at this stage, and then it'll be good for um, good for the other ones. Now remember, it's all coming through. It's I'm working off the bottom, not off the top. So that one's done. That was a shorter hole. There it is coming through there. And this one, about there. Beautiful. And then this one. There, I think. That's not going to worry me. Okay. They're all done. With my wife, Paul, I want to thank you again for all your hard work and inspiration. Hope to see you again soon. Well, thank you very much for that, Frank. I was just having a quick read on the side there. Um, <laughs> Darkhead imposter. Yeah. There were there was not many people entered that competition. I got to tell you, but I'm really happy with the result. It's taken four weeks, and no one said, "Hey, what's going on with your hair?" Because it was just gradual. So I will be sending out. I've already drawn the winners. I will be sending out <clears throat> uh, some free product from that company, which is it's a Restoria. Anyway, it, Chemist Warehouse. If you want to get it in Australia. It's called Restoria, and it takes 28 days to go from grey to not so grey. So, I don't know if you can see it around the back. 
And as I said before, I'm going back to the 70s. I really had a fun time in the 70s. I was a kid, enjoying myself, no responsibilities. Uh, okay, now they're going to go together like so. And I'm going to think about it for a second. I'm going to glue into one of them and not in the other. I'll get my glue and a brush. And I'll explain. This is something a lot of you will know, but I'll just discuss it quickly for people that may not be aware of what works with gluing and wood and what doesn't. Now, inside the mortise for the domino, one of the great things about it is we have a lot of side or face grain along here, not much end grain. Now with a dowel, because it's a circle, you only get a few points of contact with the side grain. You get an awful lot of contact with end grain in the piece that you're putting in. Now the dowel itself, or this is a non-rotating dowel called a domino, you'll see along the side here, that's all face or surface, whatever you want to do, flat grain. Here is end grain. Now end grain, you'll see, is like a whole, it's been explained as a whole bunch of drinking straws. So this is, this is how the tree used to pull all the nutrient up from the ground, from its roots, uh, bring water up and all that kind of stuff to create sugars with chlorophyll from photosynthesis on the leaves. I'm not going to give you a lesson on how a tree lives, but the important part for us as woodworkers is this part here, whilst it works a little bit with glue, is nowhere near as efficient as the sides. Now, as we're going into this wood here, you'll see just here, this end here, that's the same as this, end grain, porous. So we want these parts here on the sides, which is the same as here, to have side to side contact in the joint. It's not hard. So, I'm going to put some glue in there and I don't have to put truckloads all over the place. And I'm only going to put glue in one side because we want this to be detachable. So some glue in there and I will mostly put it on the sides. I used to, <laughs> I used to put glue in and it'd be squeezing out everywhere. I'll put, I'll put a little bit more than that. I don't, don't want to be too light, light, uh, light on. But it was when I started watching Cole with his uh, Gifkin's jig and box making that it's when I started realizing, don't put too much glue in. And don't glue in near the inside of the box. Glue the outside towards the inside of the box. It makes a huge difference. I don't know if Cole's watching, but he would say, yep, definitely. That's the way to do it. And I'm surprised you were listening, Dave. Because, <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, so I'm putting the glue in there, as I say, mostly on those points. If you want to pour it in there and just have to take it all off later on, that's fine. You can do that as well. I um, need to make sure that these are all 60, 60. That one is too long. And I'm going to put a little bit on the side as well. Drive that in. Wasn't too hard, was it? See, I'm not really bothering about putting it on the edges there because it's only going to contact end grain. Of, really of no real consequence. And considering this is the bed head for my bed, I don't want it falling off and smacking me on the head during the night. So I want to make sure that it works. Now, see the squeeze out? Nothing. Nothing to mention. Next trick is we're going to put them together. Like that. Done. Now we've got the lines here, so I know where they are. I know which side is glued. 
now that I, <laughs> I'm pulling it out. It's that side, David. Okay. Come on. There we go. And I'm going to write on it. Glue. Okay, so there we go. Glue. Now, ordinarily, I would put that to the side and let that dry. You must put it together in this situation to let it dry. You know why? These things have a habit of moving around a little bit and you will never get it pushed back together. Let it dry like that. I can run it through the drum sander and that's what I'll end up doing. And then I will also put a quarter inch round on the top, only across and across and across the bottom and the bottom. Why? Well, I'll show you with this part here. This is the one I finished. Put that together. Because that's the only part that's going to be exposed to the world. This, don't put around here because that's going to be glued, screwed to there. And don't put around on this. This is going to be screwed to the wall. You'll notice there is a hole right here. And that's what I'm going to do when that finishes drying. I will drill a hole through the side that hasn't been um, glued. So I will drill a hole through here. But I won't drill it on this side. I'll drill on the other side. Why? Because I don't want to see that screw head from the outside of the bed. So this will be the left hand mount. This will be the right hand mount on the back of that thing over there. And that's the next thing we're going to do. We're going to screw this onto there so you can see what it looks like. This one I will do with Craig screws. The other one I'm going to do, because I only got that idea when I finished that one. I thought, why did you do it that way, David? Before we get there, I'm going to show you a trick with this thing. Now this, no sponsorship, no affiliation. I have been struggling ever since I owned this thing to tighten the, tighten the cutters up in it and change the cutters. It's only now that I'm starting to slow down a little bit that I have an opportunity to, to think about things. So what I do now is I crack that, I pull that up there, push the button. How much easier is it now to change a cutter out in tighten her up easy if you took nothing else away from the show with you today just that one little thing and this is what's going to happen give me time to think about things rather than chasing my tail and I will come up with these little tips I'll either pop them on Instagram Facebook the Patreon page. There are specific videos I'm only going to do for patrons and it might help you. So we push that little guy there. See this one here? And then we can slide that in and it's on already down to the depth I want and just fine adjust and that's done. That tool is now set for perfect use really quickly. And remember the other week when I was going, oh, now be careful you don't shove that battery in there while it's turned on. It's got a no volt release, an NVR switch in it. So no volts going into it. The switch turns off internally apart from this switch. Okay, I'm going to turn it on, pull the battery up. Let's, let's see what happens. Nothing. Turn it off, turn it back on. There you go. Easy. Now, I'm going to set the camera up over here and I'll have a look at which so side I've got the screw holes done already. It's the far end, is it? Great. You know how I just said there's the left and the right? I'm an idiot. <laughs> I don't care. We'll leave it. We'll do it. Do it this way. That's fine. Uh, I'll bring it over. We'll put it on this end. Again, 
Again, this is what we're going to try and fix. Stop Dave being a Wally. Move that out of the way. And um, Wally Bronson, I'm sorry, but that is a saying in Australia. I don't know why they say Wally. You know, you hear, you see the books. Where's Wally? Um, I don't know. I I don't know. I lay it down on its face. And you might see I've got the screw holes down here. Pick this up and move it along a little. Beautiful. And it's this one. Remember the right angle against the wall, the sloping thing here on here. Vicky said to me the other day, why do you want to lean it backwards like that? Well, I just think it's going to be a whole lot more comfortable leaning back. You know, the back of chairs normally have a little bit of a... A slope, I just think it's going to be more comfortable. It's going to go onto there like that. I'll get this camera, move the, the um, thing away from there, move the drill press out of the way, and I'll pull the, cable, pull the uh, battery on that straight, oh, sorry, pull the cable out of the wall and plug the other one back in. So when we have the Patreon meeting, it'll all be good. And I'll set the camera up over there. If it'll reach, it should do. So his sign getting in the way or being functional, one or the other. Let's have a look to camera three. There. So you can see how it's going to end up down here and why we've created this joint. And there's the hole in the domino to line up with that. That's going to stop it separating when it's on the wall. These will go here. That one will go there. And that one is there. Uh, I'm going to grab a couple of screws. One there, one over there. And a screwdriver. Um, screwdriver is a good idea, David. Where have you put it? It is more than likely in that toolbox. There it is. Found you. And have I got any more screws lying around over here? I put things out of the way. I found them. And they're under a plastic bag. So it's another tip. When I was painting this, when I was painting the finish on here, I'll see if I can tip this up a little and back to about there. So when I was painting this with the roller, I, I had a roller finish on the end because I like the dimply effect that the roller gives me. It looks a whole lot better than brush marks going all over the place. It gives you a regular pattern. I, um, I have these little Ziploc bags and I just slide the roller into it. Ziploc it and it's done. I haven't got to worry about cleaning the roller out every time. Put one in there just to get it started. And this one down here is going into that one. That's the time. Just coming up to 12 o'clock. Just about to finish the show. When people are saying all these things, Peter, hi Dave. I'm a relatively newcomer to the live show. Finding Melamine pocket hole draw build video will continue to follow anything you post. Enjoy the time with your family. Thank you. There we go. Rock solid. And when I put this on, Got me. I will put another screw in there. And locky two. See this locks this in now. All right. Inventions of wood. Uh, best of luck and happy trails to you. Have enjoyed your shows that I could watch live. Thank you your time and hard work sharing your skills from Dan in Vancouver, Washington. Thank you. Lucky, congrats on the final show, Granddad. 
Well, thank you, Lachlan. Okay, so now, when I stand it up, that's the angle it's going to be. I will make sure I had a couple of chips of sawdust on the bench here and the paint hasn't totally hardened. So I've got to get them off quickly before they become part of the bed head. Now that will sit, but I'm not going to tempt fate. So that's how it's going to look against the wall. There'll be a mount here and a mount down the other end. And right in the middle, I will put a small uh, pocket hold section right in the center here. You can't see that, obviously. <laughs> um, what will I do to support that so it doesn't go tumbling on me? If I come around the back here, I might be able to prop something under here without it smashing everything. Uh, where are we? Can I do it this way? That might work. And it may not. Um, if I raise it up to there, that may not work either, David. I can lean it back a little to there. Give me time. It will work. It will work. I've got one more trick to hold it up whilst I move cameras around and things like that. And that is, I'm going to rotate this. So now it will be an opening style. And stand that up again now to there. Put this in here. And see where it will come up to. There we go. That's going to do it. Come around. Move this to there. Bring this one back here. Back to there. What are you doing, Pierre? And then back to this one. There we go. So that's leaning back at around about, about eight degrees, the tilt on it. And you can see if you're lying down. Sound now? I've got it back. I'm aware of what's happening. So if you're laying back in bed and you can have this like this bit of an angle pillows here. One other thing I was thinking of doing, and that is getting some pillow slips, like getting some maybe three, because king size bed will take three pillows across it. So I was thinking about getting some pillow slips and sewing some ribbon onto them. Same color as whatever the doona is or whatever the color the pillow slip is. And you have all of these here now. So I could tie a ribbon onto there and there and hold the pillow slip so that the pillow doesn't slide down. That is an annoyance to me. I hate leaning up against uh, the wall, reading, and the pillows just slide out of the way. This could be good. Could be very good. I've had all sorts of suggestions as what else I could do with this, but we're not going to go there. <laughs> so I reckon that's great. All righty. Switch back to the other camera, and I should really clean that brush, but I'll do it during the Patreon meeting. All right, where are we? Jason, thanks, Dave. We'll miss seeing you regularly, but look forward to your tips and tricks. Wally, it's great to have, uh, great Dave. Just love it being famous. Okay, all right. Um, Sean, it's been great watching your live shows. Still watch your videos. Uh, all I can say is thank you. Best to you and your family. Uh, Glenn, well done, Dave. Your live shows have been enjoyed by many and your ongoing commitment uh, to that time slot. All right. Well, again, thank you from the last 10 years. And I will have the Patreon meeting. Remember, I will be doing videos. I'm not going. I'm just stopping this particular 
forum. All right, look after yourselves, be nice to each other. And this time I will not say, see you next week. I will see you next video.